Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And this is ZD Donahue. And I just want to share a text that I just got from Becca. We're recording right now at the in-home uh, studio. So here at Studio Media Headquarters, I got... Uh, <laughs> and Becca just texted and she said, LOL, a woman just asked Sam if I was her helper because kids are out of school. <laughs> Becca's kind of small. She said, Sam... Sam was like, no, she's an employee. She's just little. <laughs> um, I also want to share that Becca, that, that Sam and I are proud members of the Two Cheeseburger Club. That's correct. And Becca and ZD kind of like to deny their membership in the Two Cheeseburger Club. And that's okay. A little self-loathing is natural. But Becca got Sam and I uh, cheeseburger earrings for Christmas. And this woman came in and started asking me all these questions about sewing classes. And I just want to say her demeanor was not super pleasant. And uh, then she left and I was like, she probably thinks I don't have a lot of credibility. Yeah, I think I think it challenges I was your credibility. Wearing we, cheeseburger earrings. Right. I don't know. Um, and and yeah. Sam, <laughs> Sam did admit that she wishes that she was married to the hamburger. <laughs> No, she is married to the oh, Hamburglar. She, believes she decided that she that believes he is the Hamburglar. She decided that uh, maybe he looks a little bit like the Hamburglar. Well, something. he kind of does. Anyway, maybe. he doesn't have the right color hair, though. You know. Oh, really? The Hamburglar is blonde. Is he? Oh, I guess he is. Yeah. I guess or like he is. redheaded or something. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I don't know what we're talking about right now. <clears throat> well, this was about sewing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> What are, what are we talking about today, ZD? I don't know. Are we talking about Oh, unconventional this, sewing tips. Unconventional sewing? We did okay. decide. We did decide. Well, I just I, forgot. You, no. I said, what about this? And you didn't answer me. Oh, I thought it was a really good idea. I think okay. we should talk about it right now. Okay. Mom, tell us one of your unconventional sewing tips. Well, you know sometimes how you might not have a zipper that exactly matches your dress. Yes. And this seems to be, or whatever you're sewing, and this seems to be particularly often when you're using an invisible zipper, okay? Which means you want it to be really invisible. Maybe people think they want it to really match because invisible zippers often go in, like, formal garments. Right, and they Maybe want it to be invisible. Perfect, and they want it to be perfect. So this happened to me one time that I had this sort of, like, caramely brown dress and it was it was a evening gown and I had to put a zipper in it and I could not find anything that looked right that and just that little bitty tab was hanging there and I knew that the person had short hair or was going to wear their hair up or something and I knew this little tab was going to show right I'm like what can I do what can I do you paint the thing okay the zipper didn't the zipper color didn't matter but the little tab mattered because that was what showed. Yeah, on an invisible zipper, okay. the, the tape and the teeth don't show. And honestly, I absolutely remember I used fingernail polish, which is a very good thing to use because it's very durable. And you, you can put on layers and, you know, and this was sort of a shiny fabric, right? And, and like I said, but it was this caramely brown color. And I had... I think it was actually one of the girls, like uh -huh. you or Hillary or somebody, had this fingernail polish. I'm looking all over the place for it. And it was called Tootsie Roll. Uh -huh. And it was kind of pearlized. And it was perfect. It was the perfect so thing. I, so you can paint. Now, the other thing you can paint, which I used to paint all the time, and I don't know why I didn't think about painting zippers or zipper pulls, was you can paint your buttons, and you can dye your but. Right. You can dye plastic, and you can and mother of pearl dyes really well. Well, so we do have. I just want to before you move on to dyeing and painting buttons. Right. We have a a drawer of fingernail polish. Yeah. In the sewing studio. That's right. And so most people might be like, ah, I don't want fingernail polish in my sewing studio. Well, we, ha you know? well, we have it. But we have it, and we use it for That's that right. reason. That's in right. Order. So yeah, painting buttons. Mom, mom loves to paint buttons. I do. You can dye the buttons. You and dye buttons. The picture that comes into my mind with dyeing buttons, even though I knew how to do this for a long time before Pinterest existed, is the Pinterest picture where they've put the dye in the muffin tins and they dye the buttons. No, I didn't know. You I don't know this. this. Somebody, like different colors in different they tins. They do it in the oven. 
they do it in the oven. I, I guess. Never did I'm it like, in the I don't oven. know why they're doing it in the oven. I didn't. Yeah. I just do it. Yeah, you just die. I don't do it in the oven. In you like guys. the sink or whatever. Right, and however long you leave them in, uh huh. The you know, they'll get darker and darker and darker. Yeah. Right. So in the oven. I, yeah, <laughs> okay. I, I was like, wait. I, I don't how know does that, that work? you need that. Well, maybe well, first of all, I hope they're them. not plastic. Yeah, that's they'll what be I was, That's what I was thinking. But maybe yeah, mother of pearl really it dies really pretty. Uh huh. It really does. Any pearlized buttons. So you can always your invisible zippers are invisible. That's right. So you don't really need. I had, um, I had somebody come in and tell me about how there was this new store opening up, like you know, a little ways away from us, and they had every color of invisible zipper you could ever want. Yeah, I have three colors of and invisible I'm like, zippers. Yeah, okay, you know. <laughs> so I I have invisible zippers in my studio, and I have white, and I have beige, and I have black. Right. And they accommodate everything, and I never have to worry about if I have the right zipper on hand. And if you do, I mean, if you find them on sale and you want to buy a bunch of colors, right. it's great. But if you have a light blue one and it needs to be orange, just paint the pole. That's right. Orange. Well, and you can dye it. Yeah. Yeah, you can you dye You can dye zipper. just about anything. You guys, you can dye leather. Yep. You can dye. I have dyed so many white ballet slippers to colors I, I cannot tell you. Well, of I course mean, you can dye leather. I mean, yeah. look at all these things that are out well, there, Well, I don't right? know. You, you can't can dye a cow. <laughs> yeah, the cow is alive, you know. But look at all the purple leather things that right, exist right, and all that. Right. So uh, what's your next unconventional sewing tip? I, I, use, I don't buy lining fabric. I like this tip. I seldom... First of all, lining fabric usually feels awful. Uh huh. It's usually the cheapest thing you can buy. I, I bought lining fabric, but I didn't make lining out of it. Sure. I usually, yeah, I make a Halloween costume or something. I tend to use what I have, and often, very often, I will line with a cotton. And mm. and a lot of times, it is a now, get what I'm saying, a good quality, a fine quality quilting cotton. Because there are those stiff, itchy ones, okay, that I don't like. You can just basically guess that mom's fabrics are all, you know. Nice. Nice, yeah. <laughs> they're all nice. They're all nice. Well, if I'm going to put all the work and time into it, it's going to be nice. Absolutely. So, for instance, um, I might make a silk dress with a cotton lining. I don't know how – if. Silk is very hot. If you're going to wear this silk dress and it needs a lining and you're going to wear it um, to your you know, daughter's in July the summer, wedding. Right, in a July <laughs> wedding and you're going to bake, you might want a cotton lining in it. Right. It Kinda might feel away. better for it. Yes, it will feel better on your skin. So um, I think, well, when I did your sister's wedding, I let all of the bridesmaids pick out the lining they wanted. Yeah, they all they, had the same color dress, but but they picked out their own lining. So they were all these fun, like, cotton prints, and mine kind of looks like it's been, like, splatter painted, painted yeah, kind of, yeah. you know. And uh, But it was really comfortable. I really like to uh, do that because it's fun looking, too, right. for the wearer. Right. And I think it's I think it's more durable. And, and yeah, it is more I, I mean, mean, can you imagine if I would have put that... They call it China silk. Like it's not silk, but it's that acetate polyester. It's almost brittle sometimes. Right. Well, well, that's the other thing. You can't get about, a good press on it. Talk about static. Yeah, that know? too. That too. No, and it hangs nicely. I mean, it's not right. too thick, but it's right. a high quality cotton. I want to say right. that. Right. You know, it might not be the cheapest option. Is what I wanted to say. Right. Earlier. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that go buy fabric that you don't like how it feels or looks. And that makes it okay for lining. I'm no. saying upgrade your lining. Yeah. Now, you know, I make myself maybe a pair of black wool pants, and I might have a silk lining in it. Or I might have a polyester print, some wild print lining, you know, so I have these black pants, and then you open it up, and they're right. like, you know, wild and crazy inside. But I can do that because I sew. Yep, that's right. And I, I find it fun. I find it, you know, uh, a designer, a design element. Everybody likes to use something fun on the inside of their jeans right. for their pocket. Right. You the know, pa- we've done that with all the ginger jeans. Right. They're... People have used, um, you know, somebody came specific in with, pockets. Somebody came in with, like, sewing fabric, too. Well, that had sewing it had machines sewing on it. machines on it yeah. and, and whatever. Or, you know, didn't we have one with cats, I think? Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, Becca's done a lot of cat stuff. Right. Uh, Becca so, likes cats. So using non, you know, quote-unquote non-lining fabrics. Right. Okay, I want you to choose a short tip. A short tip to share before we go to message break. 
Oh. What about? I don't have one of those. <laughs> I've got, I've got it. Okay. I've got it. Okay. And you may have shared it in a recent podcast, but I just want to reiterate. Okay. Mom doesn't use the same color thread in the top of the sewing machine as she does in the bobbin. Not always. Not always. Um, and it can be way different if it's going to be taken out later, or it can be slightly different. Okay. But why do you do this, Mom? That is so. Usually I do that when I'm sewing, like, lots of stuff, maybe, you know, 14 costumes or something, so that if I have to rip out a seam, I can quickly find the bobbin thread, and I know it's on the bottom. one. And, you know, I used to not even do that in the serger. I... And so in the serger, I always use a different color needle needle thread because from that's your, the thread you rip out so to get the... the for, for people who right. don't know, she used a different color needle from her looper threads in the serger. Just want to right. So the needle thread needs to be the color that you're going to pull out. You need to be able to identify it. <laughs> that's right. And right. so, you know, even if it is like your final product and it's something that's really important, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that you won't make a mistake and that's that right. you might need to take something out. So if you're making your green silk dress right. for your daughter's wedding. Maybe it's a medium green right. in the top and a lighter That's on right. the bottom. Just slightly, even just a slight difference. I this just think about if you're sewing a black garment together. How black much, and charcoal. Black and charcoal. And let me you tell know. you, the older you get, the more you're going to want that charcoal thread on that black because you will not be able to find you it. You know, everybody talks about getting older. Yeah. I must just you can't like, find it either. You're already I old. I must not be able to see. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm like, I'm like, give me all the light possible. <laughs> and I ain't, you know, black on black on black. I mean, I can't find it either. But yeah, using a slightly off black or something a little different, uh, even on your final product, is okay. You don't have to match it. And that's why. Before we go to message break, and we won't be advertising these in the message break. That's why I don't think that those little things that you stick inside your spool to hold your bobbin with your spool. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I never worry about well exactly matching my bobbin thread anyway. The reason I think those aren't is why do I want to keep that? Because I will use up bobbin thread on right. other things. Like, yeah. I don't want to keep a bunch of bobbin. Pl- well, well, we, Not everybody has the volume of thread I do. That's right, either. but it, they don't. That's a tool that doesn't work. Let for me us, tell you, buy you yourself know? twenty to fifty bobbins. You know, that's right. just make the make the big step and keep them there and have them and never worry about if your bobbins wound or not wound or the right color or whatever. Have them there. It's a it's a tool you need. Well, that would have been a good short tip. That's a tip. <laughs> that's a tip. Okay, let's break for a message break here. Hey, mom. Yeah. Um, you can feel free to compliment me. Oh, no. On on what? On this. What? My feel free to compliment me enamel lapel pin. Oh, Mallory, every time that you hear something wrong, are you going to make a lapel pin about it? Maybe. Um, do you, do you want one? Yes, I do. Okay, well... Isn't it teal? Yes, it's teal and pink, and you can get one by going to sewhere.com slash compliment. Just so you know, I'm not putting it on my lapel. It's going on my hat. Oh, it's going on your hat. It could be a hat pin, too. Okay, all right. So if you want to get in on the feel free to compliment me uh, in in on the club, go to sewhere.com slash compliment and order our very first sewhere.com lapel pin. Sewing out loud. All right, and now we're back from right. our message break. So what's your next tip, Mom? Well, let's just follow up a little bit on that thread thing. Because I have written down, don't worry about matching your thread. And I see people go through great lengths to match their thread that's on the inside of a garment, and they go crazy because it's a shade one way or the other, okay? First of all, if you're looking at that spool, it will sew in lighter, so know that. So you really want to shade darker. Here's the other thing. Once you launder it and everything, it might change color anyway. So it's, if it's close, and you know, your seam shouldn't be showing. I just have like... And if you're going to top stitch, yeah, I prefer not to top stitch with construction thread. I either top stitch with top stitch thread or machine embroidery thread. I just really, 
am not good at relating to that urge of needing to exactly match well, the Well, and thread. then people will take it like out in the sunlight. And I'm like, so when is the inside of your garment going to be going in to be, sunlight? You're going to go out in my parking lot and turn your clothes inside out and have <laughs> somebody look at them? I don't know, but I'm not doing that. Yeah, you really don't need to. I mean, we have a That's ton of. That's not the thing to worry about if you want something to look good. Right. We have a ton of thread. I mean, we have lots of different colors of thread, yeah. for sure. I mean, I, I don't right. want to say that like you only need 10 colors of thread, but they don't have to match exactly. And right. obsessing over that. And you know what? That, They're not going to. Obsessing over right. that is right. just so counterproductive to like how much time you have That's to right. spend on something like this. And I'm like, man. And I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't relate to that urge, but a lot of people from our other thread blending podcast, uh-huh. they, a lot of people said, Thank you. Thank you for giving us permission. You, yeah, you yes. kind of freed me from this. Right. Or you made me well, realize you know, it's not that important. And sometimes when, like, I'm sewing a print, like, okay, so say I'm sewing a print and I only am using the serger to finish my seams. Uh-huh. It's woven. Sometimes I'll pick, like, all the colors that are in the print, you know, and blend and them together them and it makes it fun. Well, yeah, then you yeah. get into something like that where it's like you have a black and white fabric. What color are you going to use? What are you going to use, huh? Yeah, yeah, huh? yeah. What yeah. are you going to use? Maybe you'll use red. I was going to use teal. Actually, yeah. I have I I get more kind of in a tizzy when I'm trying to find the perfect complementary or contrasting color. Like let's say yeah, I have Yeah, that's almost harder. Yeah, right. let's say I have like an orange right dress and I want to do like a blue top stitching right. thread on right. it. I'm like, "Oh, I got to find the right blue." Blue or teal and, or what is And then know, when I it, put yeah. this blue on here, is it too light and does the orange make it look white? Right. You know, or something and like that. And that can happen. Yes. Yeah, so that's where Actually, I Actually, that might be a little sewing tip I don't have written down because somebody just talked about they're setting up their sewing space mm-hmm. and and she's actually got like a delinquent bedroom she gets to keep, you know, that uh-huh. that and she said, what color should I paint my walls? And my suggestion is stay kind of close to white. Right. Um, because I don't want the color reflecting off of my walls onto what I'm doing. And it will reflect a different way at different times of the day with different lighting and all that. So um, ours is like just not quite white. Right. Right. It's you know, just an off-white. I can tell you what it is. It's all of the off-white colors we had left over that we poured together in a big bucket. And yep. then we painted, you know. So I don't decorate my sewing space so much as, you know, it's much more functional. Right. And I have a lot of white because, I, you know, I want to lay things up against the white table or mm-hmm. whatever. And I know this because we've got those all those multicolored curtains in the yep. window of the store. And it really yeah, and it distorts stuff. Yeah, we we were looking at some thread and I thought, Oh, everything's pink right here because there's this pink <laughs> That's curtain, right. you know, and That's so right. we like we did move to a different place. But yeah. Right. The thread the thread not perfectly being the same color as the fabric, I think might be a big revelation for a lot of people. I think that um maybe it's something they just didn't know that they didn't have to. I'd be much worry about. more. I'm much more worried about. Does my seam look nice? Right. <laughs> you know. Then, and if I have a nice seam, my thread should not be showing. That's right. So, That's right. Um, the other thing I ju- I've written down here, and this this actually we just talked about the other day, and I, I had this written down a long time ago. I just told somebody this: when you buy a um, a pattern, a commercial yeah. pattern, or you know that you have not drafted yourself, mm-hmm. correct? <clears throat> And you have a button, you know, you have buttons or buttonholes, like maybe on a placket down the front of the a dress or a shirt or something like that. Right. They will put a button placement guide. Yes. Usually in the pat- pattern. So there'll be this long strip, you know, um, and it'll have little, you know, um, hash marks on it where you're supposed to put the buttons. Right. Disregard it. Disregard. First of all. It won't tell you what size to make your buttonholes because your buttons might not be this. You don't have to buy the same size buttons that it says on that pattern envelope. That's right. Okay? I mean, you do want them to look appropriate or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you may space your buttonholes differently. They may be spaced apart differently. And your your button, you know, the button may sit in a different place um, vertically, I guess. Right. Is what I'm trying to say in the vertical position or so the, and the horizontal. You don't pay attention to the button placement on a commercial pattern. Right. I put on the garment after I've got it almost completed when mm-hmm. I'm ready to put my buttons on and my and I've chosen my button. Sometimes I've got more than one button there. 
in case the button I got didn't look right. Yeah. You know, I mean, that that comes up. But, or if it doesn't look right, go get a different button. You know, take that garment with you to the store and go buy it. Don't put a button on you don't like because you've put the, you're then put the buttonholes in for that specific size button. Right. And what if you find one you like better? So make it like you like it. So anyway, I put it on and I, you know, take straight pins and I pin that placket together just like I'm going to wear it. And I decide with those pins where I want those buttons placed. Because if I don't have a, I should have a button right between the apexes of my breast, right? I have breast. You, okay, let's just. Right. You need to put the shirt on. Right. Put the placket together and find the places where you have the most stress Right across the shirt, which right. for most, you know, for a lot of women, right, is going it's gonna be to at be your bust line, right, right at that bust line, and then you know, or maybe it's maybe you've got one on your belly area too, That's or right. something like that, and you're going to start with those places for your button placement. That's correct. The highest and then space them out, and you know, the pattern might have said you needed seven buttons, and you might not only need five, or you might want ten. Here's the other thing you can do when you say a point of stress or something. You may need buttons in a place that's not particularly well dividable. Uh huh. Okay, where you know you place them all three inches apart or something. What you can do is you can buddy up your buttons. Mm -hmm. So you can put two buttons very close together. Drop down, you know, three, two, three inches, and put two buttons very close together. So it's a design element. Plus, it's going to keep your shirt shut. So a really popular like sewing implement for people to take pictures of and post on Instagram. <laughs> Uh -oh. Is that buttonhole uh, gauge that accordion thing? ruler? Yeah. And I'm like, last time I made myself a button-up shirt, I put that shirt on, and I put a pin. Actually, I took a picture, like, of my chest, and I put a pin, like, right between the apexes of right. my breasts, and I put one, like, kind at my belly, and I just kept putting, like, pins. And those buttons are all different distances you have them at different apart. Distances? I mean, I'm not talking like there's six inches and then three inches, right. but like they are all where I needed, where you needed the them, buttons. Right. And I just I didn't even I didn't even pay attention. Right. Now you can't space it. You know, you can pick your places and figure and out then mathematically you can figure it if you out, want. You know? Right. But what I'm saying is <clears throat> that button guide isn't particularly going to give you the most flattering fit. That's right. That's right. Uh so what's an, your next tip? Sewing on sequence. Sewing on sequins or sewing on? Sewing on sequins or sewing sequins on. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, go ahead. So sequins come a couple of ways. You know, they can come in yardage, right? Yeah, like on a string almost. like a Well, no, they mean the fabric. Oh, oh. Ah! Right. The fabric, can, right? <laughs> yes, yes. So what you need to know is when you cut, if you have sequined fabric where they are sewn on. Yeah. When you cut, you are cutting the thread that holds the rest of the sequins on That's in a right. line. So if you're going to do this, you're going to have to take care of that some way. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to knot them or, you know, seam sealant or something. But you need to know that. Right. You know, there are different techniques. I just wanted to bring that up because you can't just cut into like a um, chiffon silk that has sequins on it and think that the sequins are going to stay if you cut that that line of stitching. Right. Okay. So what do you recommend? Well, I've usually stood there and knotted it. Yeah. I have also sewn a basting line yeah. on the sewing machine and just sewed through them and that will at least hold it till you get your um seam your seam in. But here's the other thing. You may want to you know, cut it and then you cut the sequins away from that thread to your seam line because you don't want those sequins inside your garment. Heard in your All they are are little little sharp blades. They're like little rotary blades. <laughs> little rotary blades, blades right yeah. <laughs> little plastic rotary ba blades, and they are horrible. It's a horrible feeling. So no matter what, I usually clip my sequins. So when I clip those sequins, mm -hmm. I clip... The sequin up to the hole and then take it off of the thread. I don't clip the thread. Right, right, right. I understand. Okay. Uh-huh, yeah. Yep. So it's almost like you're making it, uh, you know, you're not making it into a Pac-Man, but almost. You're, kind of, you're, right, right. You're, you're slitting it slitting right on it, one side. the, the right. radius, yes. And then, okay, so then what about sequins that are, you know, 
on, on basically like on a thread, like in a line. Yes. Or sometimes yes. they're on elastic. And uh -huh. how do you sew those on? I do a long uh, and possibly a little wider zigzag to couch them on. And I make sure to use some kind of presser foot that has a little more space underneath the foot. Mm -hmm. So you might even find that you have like an open toe applique foot uh, because most of our traditional couching feet are meant for like tubular cording or I something like, like that. I even like a Teflon foot too. Okay, the yeah, and I think... You know, the Teflon feet that they sell right right now right. for the baby lock, I think it has that kind of like trough. It has a little trough in there. You back. know, underneath that, yes, that allows it to And the other thing when you're sewing those sequins on is they are lapped over each other. Yeah. So there's one way that if you sew, the sequins will pop up, and uh -huh. there's another way where they lay down. They'll so, slide right So you want foot. to make, you know, note of that so that when you're putting them through the machine that you're sewing them as they're laid on top of each other instead of, you know, um, the Slipping other way where you you can so flip them back is it up. Pot, have you ever gotten a roll of sequins that you've had to like wind on to something else to get to the other oh, end? Oh, yeah. yeah. Go to the other end. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Many times. I Many just times. I just that. put them in a bowl. Yeah. I right. Don't, I don't rewind them. That's too much trouble. Right? I wouldn't <laughs> we rewind need, them until after I use what I need, need to use. We need a transfer. Right. You right. know, a uh, crank system. Crank right. system. And uh, those do exist. Well, and couching, I think, could be its right. own podcast episode. So, you yes, know. and so when you sew those, you can sew through those sequins or you can sew over those sequins. Most of the time, you're going to hit them even if you do yeah. sew over them. I use a Microtex uh -huh. or a denim needle. Oh, my gosh. A really, sequins really aren't denim. sharp needle. But they're sharp and they're coated. And they're a slick needle and they're very strong. Right. And they have a good piercing ability. Right. So that's what I use, and I just zigzag away over. Now, I like to use... The uh, mono poly thread, which is the clear thread uh -huh. in the top, yeah, and then a regular bobbin thread. You like to sometimes just match the thread. I just don't. I, she doesn't like that mono I'll poly. That I love it. I, have I love a personal it. thing. I never have trouble with it. I love it. I don't know that I have trouble with oh. it. I have. I don't have trouble with it. Right. I know a lot. I've helped a lot of people uh -huh. have had trouble with it, but it just. This seems really silly because you're sewing plastic sequins onto your garment, Because right? it's plastic, too. Yeah, and I'm kind of like, oh, it's like plastic thread yeah. or nylon or whatever. And it just doesn't, uh, I don't know. It's a it's a silly prejudice, but yeah. I've used well, I've used all the of your Most of your wedding dresses have the monopoly sewing the sequins right. on. Right. I have. Um, or a nylon. I've used the... Yeah, so the monopoly, you know, is polyester. Monopoly is much nicer than the nylon. Than the nylon, yeah. Yes. So I should, I, maybe, maybe I have that like, you know, old prejudice from yeah. some of the older threads or something like that. But the monopoly doesn't stretch like the nylon. For will. some reason, I'm just like, you know, if you're sewing on red sequins, just get out some red, uh, you know, and that will polyester work. embroidery. And, and that'll you know. that'll work, you know. Uh, it, would, it depends on it depends on what if it if it's a costume, mm -hmm. you know, and nobody's gonna see it. Be closer than twenty feet to it. Sew it on however you have to. I will say, but if you know if it's a wedding gown or something, you might want to do it differently or an evening gown. Yeah, I will say that I think if you do use embroidery thread, to use polyester embroidery oh, yeah. thread. Yeah. If you use like a rayon, or, it just it cuts too yeah, easily. The, it breaks uh, too easily. The sequins can actually cut the thread over time. Right. Now you can also sew on sequins one by one by hand. Yep. And you will do that by going up through the hole, putting a bead on. And going back down through the hole. Yep. That's how you secure the sequin. <clears throat> unless you're sewing them also in sequence and overlapping them. And that's another technique. A sequence of sequins. Mm -hmm. A sequin to sequin to sequin. So that, that <laughs> sort of hits sequins. You did, okay. yeah. Do you, have more, do you have more tips? I do. Okay, let's go. If you're going to line something. Oh, I love this tip. Cut your lining with your fashion fabric. Love that. So it's the same size. Now, if there's, sometimes there's a pleat like in a jacket or something, so you may have to allow for that. Sure. Pleat. But mm -hmm. the edges will be the same if you cut them together. That's right. Now, here you go. What about if you're lining a bag, like a tote bag? Are you asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you because I taught you this question. trick. If you're lining a tote bag, no matter what the pattern says, make <laughs> your lining 
half inch to an inch I, I do. I actually do a quarter to a half usually. Oh, I don't, so, you know. You do I, as much of an inch? Yeah, that, that's fine. That, on a that's big fine. bag? On a I've big, done an the inch. bigger the bag, the more you need to do. Right. Yeah, I've done an inch. Right. And I was uh, I was happy with it. So um, you make your lining shorter. You make your lining shorter. Yep. Then your are then And we're bag. talking about shorter, not the width of the bag, but shorter. Because when you go to put that lining back inside the bag... If it's too big, it will be all ripply and rinky, rink, rinky, blah, 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 blah. Oh, wrinkly. Um, so it will be all wrinkly if there's too much fabric there. You actually want less fabric. That's right. That's then is on the outside. Yeah, so of your, your bag. lining needs to be a little smaller, just because of the nature. Even if it's a bag that's just like one layer of leather or something, the inside is smaller than the outside. Well, I think unless you have I one, have more. well, I know you have more, but okay. I think that might be where we need to wrap it up for okay. today. Um, although I know a few of you said that you like the super duper duper long podcast, but where I think I think we're at a good stopping point here. So, if you have any other unconventional sewing tips, or you're just absolutely um, shocked by something that ZD has said, let us know in the comments on this podcast. You can follow us on Instagram at ZD Sewing Studio. Uh, you can follow me on the Self Sewn Wardrobe and. Uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you. So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.